Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to all my viewers who are watching this live session. I am Zainab Mazhar, the Education Counselor of UK in HR Consultants. So let me introduce you about HR Consultants. And HR Consultant is serving education consultancy industry in Pakistan since 1983. We have offices located in the main cities across Pakistan that can easily be approachable for everyone. The services provided by HR Consultants are academic counseling, selecting the right institution, securing admission, test preparation, and visa guidance. So the main concern for students is to choose the country in which you want to study. So today we have an international guest, Mr. Antilip Kazi, who is representing St. Mary University and the general manager of HR, Ms. Nadia Aram. So let me uh, tell you that why students want, why students prefer to study in UK. UK is one of the prominent destinations for students going abroad. UK is also basically academically one of the best country to study in. British education has a strong reputation worldwide and UK has a long history of welcoming international students to study in its universities and colleges. So the best thing to study in UK is that UK now has introduced a post-study work visa option for an international students that help them to work after their study to get their professional experience. Now I'm handing over to Ms. Nadia Iram, the general manager of HR Consultants. Hi ma'am, how are you? I'm good, Zana. Thank you so much. It's, it's so nice to see you people and um, our colleagues from St. Mary and and uh, we are very happy uh, and we are very welcoming to, for uh, being an Asia consultant to all the students who are sitting at home and they are thinking that, uh, you know, that the, uh, either they need to apply for the admissions or not. Uh, we are doing this live session just to uh, introduce the people that we have the international staff always available with us. Our team is available with us being uh, working with the HR consultants. I'm here uh, it's my 15 years with the HR consultants. So we are here to support the students for the admissions, uh, not for only for the admissions. Our team is here to assist the students in the right way, what course they need to select, what institutions they need to focus on uh, in terms of their budget, in terms of their requirements, in terms of their course requirements even. And then at the same time, our admission teams are also working and uh, I, I, am also want, I also want to give a message to the students that HR team is available. Uh, we, are, we are working from home, we are working for the admissions and uh, the students are getting the admissions in time. And uh, it's, it's a great time that you people need to apply now. I can share my details. Uh, you can look at my details with my name too. Uh, my name is Nadia Iram and my number is 0346 4747018. I'm available on my this number. So you can always uh, call us on the, on the, you can always, uh, you know, approach me to this number and you can always send me, me text via WhatsApp and, you know, I'm always available to support you for the admissions. Um, Andalip, uh, we have, we have the Andalip Kazi, who is international manager, marketing manager from St. Mary's. Uh, Andalip, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. It's nice That's to see good. you. Thanks for having yeah. me on. Yes, and we see ladies, you know, Zana, me and you, and we, we are a face of the HR and the face of the Send Betty too. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Yes, uh, Andalip, uh, would you give a little introduction about the Send Betty? Because uh, we, we just want that our students should know about the institution first. Yes, absolutely. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I, I hope I can give you an insight into St. Mary's for those of you that don't know about it. We're um, a very unique institution. We're a public university in London with a long history. We're 170 years old, founded in 1850. And we're a very uh, values-driven institution. Um, we're situated in a really beautiful part of London. It's a green historic campus next to the River Thames in a borough called Richmond, which is the safest borough in London. Um, we have an excellent location in that we're situated only 30 minutes from the city centre and 30 minutes from Heathrow Airport, which is the largest international oh. airport in the UK. 
Um, we're, we're known for offering affordable on-campus accommodation. We have catered options for students. It's competitively priced. We offer over 150 courses at undergraduate and postgraduate level uh, in a variety of subjects, which I'll tell you about later. Um, we also yeah, offer very competitive course fees. Um, and we're very well known in the UK for sport, ranked third in the UK uh, for sport. And we're very well known for um, graduate employment rates, and we're ranked number one in London for both course and teaching satisfaction. That's good, that's good. Uh, 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 Anjali, I was just looking into the St. Mary website. Uh, so can you can you give a little introduction about the courses which St. Mary is going to be offering and postgraduate specifically the courses which are popular in Pakistan students? Yeah, sure. Is it okay if I uh, share my screen with you so you can actually see them? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, okay. Students, you have a chance to uh, ask the questions from the Andali. And uh, Andali Kazi is available with us. Our HR team is available with us. Um, again, repeating the number. It's uh, 0346 It's my number. I'm available for the uh, students who are really want to go for the UK for higher studies. And they really want to get an assistance from HR consultants. Our whole team is available. And uh, you can have a Zainab number two, and uh, Zainab is also assisting us in the admissions, and also she's assisting us uh, while counseling these students too. Uh, Andalib is just going to share the screen with us uh, where we could have the course information. Yes, Andalib, please. Can you, can you see? Is it still loading? Uh, yes, it's yeah. still loading, yeah. But yeah, yes, you can, you can go on. Shall I, shall I? Okay, great. Okay, yeah. here we go. That's fine now, yes. That? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's visible. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the different departments. We've got six departments, and the ones that are highlighted are particularly the popular courses for Pakistani students. So I've listed all of the courses, but the ones that are highlighted are the ones that are particular, particularly popular in the Pakistan market. So I'll, I'll try to go as quickly as possible. So at undergraduate level in business, sub-business department, the most popular program is business management, which is a three-year BA. And it has various pathways, either in finance or in marketing or in entrepreneurship. What's key about our business programs uh, is that they offer dual accreditation with the Chartered Institute for Marketing. So students can also, if they're successful, gain their level five diploma in management and leadership. And in the second and third year of the undergraduate programs, there are integrated work placements and students can also opt to do a consultancy project for a London business in the third year. So they're very, very much geared towards employability. And then at postgraduate level, the most popular program for the Pakistan market in particular is our International Business Management MSc. Uh, that has two start dates, September and January. And very, like very London, sorry. And then at postgraduate, at, um, uh, just like the undergraduate degree, it also offers dual accreditation with the Chartered Institute of Management. Um, so you can get your level seven diploma in strategic management and leadership. Um, we also have a very popular sports management program and it offers a great industry placement opportunity as does all of our postgraduate business programs. Um, Students get to visit internationally renowned venues and we have great links with high profile sports clubs and organizations for the sports management MSc and that's owing to our excellence in sports, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I believe uh, uh, you have mentioned the program that is in postgraduate international business. Uh, yeah. Can you give a little introduction about this program? Either these programs are also accreditation by the CIM? Yes. Yes, they are. They all are, all the undergraduate business programs have the dual accreditation with SIM and the postgraduate, um, the postgraduate do as well, apart from charity management. Okay, that's great. Uh, students, you need to understand this point that uh, with the Saint Mary, it's a great opportunity that if you are going for their postgraduate program, so you people be able to get the dual accreditation with the CIM too. So that would be really help you if you are coming back uh, and in your professional life. So professionals give, uh, you know, the babies to these accreditations too. Yes, please, Andy. 
Okay, great. I'll just go on now to our law department. So at undergraduate level, we offer two popular courses, LLB courses, one uh, general LLB and one that specializes in criminology. And um, we also have a business law BA, but that's not a qualifying degree. However, after the first year of the business law program, students can then choose to, to transfer onto the LLB program. And what's unique about the law programs at undergraduate level is that they're very practiced uh, they're very focused on practical vocational modules. Students get to work with the local community. They get lots of opportunities to participate in mooting, mock trials, uh, workshops around commercial awareness. And then we have specific expertise within the university in modern slavery and human trafficking, um, terrorism, counter radicalization, uh, green and sports criminology, medical fraud and prisons, uh, which obviously ties in with the law and criminology program. And and then at postgraduate level, the most popular program, particularly for the Pakistan market, is our International Business Law LLM. And that really focuses on international trade and business law. And there's lots of employability events and opportunities within that um, around mock trials, mooting, seminars, as with the undergraduate program. And they also do have integrated fieldwork visits as well, some overseas to Europe, for example, like the, uh, the World Trade Organization. Yeah, and the Leap Law is very famous in Pakistan, you know, uh, from last three or four years, uh, we are looking at, we have seen a lot of increase in the, the numbers of applications, uh, the people who are very much uh, keen to go and study law. What do you think, Zainab? Zainab, did you find out the increase in the number of applications for the law too? Because this is what I have experienced and my other colleagues do experience this thing. Anyways, uh, and we, we can we can we can uh, go forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so another large department for the university is media communications and arts. It's a bit niche, I would say, for the Pakistan market. That the most popular ones are the ones that I've highlighted. Um, the acting program, again, very niche for Pakistan, but it is worth mentioning because we have actually have had some applicants from Pakistan for our acting BA, and it's really well regarded um, within the UK, specifically because it really does equip students for a career in acting. It has 30 contact hours per week. Students get opportunities to showcase in, in London venues. Um, and the employability prospects for our acting uh, graduates are really high, which is quite unique for an acting course. It's definitely worth a mention. We also have a number of communications related programs at undergraduate level, and they have specialist pathways, either in marketing, data analytics, design, media, and they're really designed um, as a result to as a result of what the industry needs at the moment and it's delivered they're also delivered by leading industry professionals and they have excellent placement opportunities integrated yes, in that's them. Good. That's good. That's good. And then at postgraduate level um, the two programs that I, I really wanted to highlight were our international journalism MA and our sports journalism MA. So our sports journalism MA is accredited by the National Council of Training for Journalists. I would recommend any student that is interested in studying journalism to look for that NCTJ accreditation. That's the professional body of journalists in the UK. Um, we introduced one of the world's first international sports journalism MA, which looks at journalism and communication, sports journalism and communications with an international perspective. Um, our both programs are taught by award-winning journalists and broadcasters, as well as academics, and they have really good industry placements um, integrated in the program. And a lot of our graduates have gone on to work for big names such as the BBC, Sky Sports, ESPN, uh, IMG. So it's definitely a, a popular program for our international students and also particularly in Pakistan. So, uh, Andalip, how can you how can you uh, differentiate between international journalism and sports journalism? Because this is a new course, I think. So, I have seen from many institutions because we haven't yeah, heard that's, about that's sports. A great question. I would say probably the biggest um, comparator is the entry requirements. So, our sports journalism MA in particular has a higher entry criteria. So, I'll go into criteria in a bit, but generally we ask for a UK equivalent of a 2-2 for most of our degrees. However, our sports journalism degree does ask for a 2-1 and it does have a slightly higher IELTS requirement at seven. So the, the entry criteria is higher for the sports 
journalism, the international journalism is, is a little bit more flexible. So that's the real differentiating factor alongside the international perspective that's given in international journalism. So sports journalism, the sports journalism MA, where it will have um, certain modules with a more international perspective, it is more geared towards the UK, I would say, whereas international journalism is a lot broader. So it really depends, I suppose, in terms of what which area the student wants to specialise in and, and also their entry criteria. That's a big differentiating factor. Uh, so Andreep, is that sports journalism is just based on the sports something or uh, it's, it, it, how can you say that it's a sports journalism? Because it's a new it, term, I guess. It's I, it's I, communications uh, and broadcasting specifically within the sports industry. Oh, great. That's great. That's yeah, that's and and as I said, we're we're ranked third in England for sports. We're we're known nationally and internationally for our Olympic standard, world class sports facilities. So you're in safe hands in terms of any sports related programs at St Mary's because we also have really good industry links. We have programs in collaboration with Chelsea Football Club, for example. Um, you know all the big rugby all the big rugby, cricket, all, all the big uh, sports yeah. players have links within the university and that really helps with the industry uh, placement opportunities as well. Oh, that's good, that's good. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so then I'll go into our education and teaching department. We're, our roots are actually in education and St Mary's is ranked outstanding by Ofsted um, in all our areas of teacher training. So again, it's yeah. definitely a university to think about if you're looking at an education related program. But the three programs I wanna highlight, particularly for the Pakistan market, are our primary education with QTS undergraduate BA. The QTS is the qualifying uh, teaching status um, uh, addition to the program and um, so 100% of our students on this particular program are actually in uh, employment or further study on completion of the program um, and our education programs are, are ranked number one in London according to the, the Guardian this year and then at postgraduate level two programs that were particularly are, are particularly popular for the Pakistan market are um, education culture and society and this is really for uh, working professionals within education um, and it has quite a broad scope in terms of the modules that it covers. It looks at children's rights, areas such as disability, um, children with, with special needs uh, and also from an international perspective. And then the Education International Development and Justice MA, it's an interdisciplinary module and it basically looks at education within a socio-economic, cultural and political context. So it's quite interesting in that it will prepare students for careers in international development, working with governments, charities, NGOs. Um, so that, that's also quite an interesting programme at postgraduate level within the education. So, and do you think that uh, international development, uh, but the, that you, uh, the education and international development, anybody uh, who is having a different background, like from engineering background or sciences mm -hmm. background, they can always come for this programme? Or do you have some special entity requirement for this programme? No, not for the education, international and social, social justice, for um, the education culture and then the education leading innovation and change, if you can see that there, that is really geared towards uh, professionals, education professionals already working in the field, whereas this interdisciplinary programme is much broader in terms of its scope and also in terms of the students that it attracts and their backgrounds. Good, good. Zainab, what do you think that do you people are receiving it? A uh, lot of inquiries for education because in my area, I believe we uh, the education and international development is very famous program. Yes, ma'am, it's a very famous program, and many of the students want to get admission into it. Yeah, and uh, to be very honest, uh, I I need uh, I guess we need to promote this program too because this is a very good program. I have seen the contents, so I believe the education international development is a very uh, uh, it's a very prospective program for the students who are looking for the education side career. Yes, absolutely. And, and like I said, it will attract students from a lot of different backgrounds, whether it's, you know, social sciences or specifically education or even a business background as well. Yeah. Recently, because I, I believe I just put this question because recently I just received uh, one application yesterday, I guess, and mm -hmm. that student was having a, an engineering background. 
and mm-hmm. he was very interested in education so i was just asking the students that you know uh, being an engineer now you are coming into education sector so it's, it's a totally a different you know initiative so then they said that uh, you no know, the education sector is a is a very vast sector and now he he want to set his career into education sector uh, basically so uh, that that could be a good change that we can suggest this type of students mm-hmm. to go for this program uh, for education yeah. international work and social justice yes but how can you relate the education with social justice pardon see the program says this education international development and social justice so how can yeah. you uh, relate education with this social justice um it's it's looking at the role of education within different contexts so whether mm-hmm. you're looking at um migrant communities for example um or um um uh, issues around socioeconomic political contexts and the role of education within that so it oh, kind yeah. of it pulls on all of the different areas but the, obviously the stream is the role of education and and how um education can improve um areas um such as um you know in uh, in within migrant communities for example that's good okay. that's good uh, so, uh, please, uh, yes and please yes please and you have received an inquiry from a student he's asking about the entry requirement has basically his uh, he has an hssc so can you guide me the entry requirements that hssc students are eligible for direct uh, entry into bachelors um no i mean i will go into entry criteria in a, in a moment but uh, we don't accept direct entry for hsc students they will need to do a foundation so at st mary's we have our own integrated foundation so if students have over 55% at hsc level then they will be considered for st mary's uh, integrated foundation programs most of our undergraduate degrees uh, will have a foundation option attached to it you'll see on the website if there is a foundation option for students that have under 55% so let's say 50% at hsc level then they will be cascaded to our pathway provider which is called smulic and they offer also foundations in all of our programs foundations and first year but um the university doesn't accept direct um entry students with just hsc they will need to have either a one or two year undergraduate degree uh, in order to be considered for direct entry that's good mm-hmm. yes yeah, yeah. uh students i would like to say that the, we have the person with us and the, you can always contact us via our numbers my number for nadia iram is 03464747018 i'm available on this number zainab would be highlighting his number her number then please your uh, number my number is 03214747315 if any of the viewers have any inquiry regarding that that you can contact me or you can even whatsapp me yes please yes and leave uh, can you go on okay so these was the major courses uh, i guess uh, which are the more mm-hmm. famous programs for the pakistani mm-hmm. students and uh, yeah, i've got a few more if 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 okay. if it's okay i'll just t- i'll just walk you through it. at humanities we have a quite an interesting program in bioethics and medical law again another interdisciplinary program which okay. looks at ethical legal social and spiritual aspects of the advances of medicine and related technologies um again it equips students to work in quite a wide variety of areas from civic uh, leadership okay. politics healthcare biotech genetics um it's great for students that want a, a profession that is looking for graduates with high levels of human understanding critical skills critical thinking and also students that want to go into more kind of research related areas um in in those subjects and then socio social political and behavioral studies the three that i've highlighted here at postgraduate level are particularly popular for the pakistan market so we have um a really well regarded diplomacy and irma and this is popular because it's it's not only designed but it's also delivered by senior diplomatic figures and it's very hands on in terms of um the the access that students get to like networking opportunity they get 
do briefing papers, write policy documents, speeches, for example. And then we have another interesting interdisciplinary program looking at human trafficking, migration and organized crime. And this feeds into um, the Center for Modern Slavery, which is a research center at the university um, that was established five years ago, which really explores issues around human trafficking, forced labor, organized crime. And then we have a, a unique program um, looking at the psychology of mental health. This is an MSc, and that's really looking at how you can care, pe care for people uh, with a mental illness. And this has um, an applied uh, work placement opportunity as well. Uh, looks at qualitative and quantitative research, and it's great for students that are also looking um, at getting into clinical psychology. Oh, that's okay. great. That's great. Uh, Lisa, I was just thinking that uh, most of your programs, you do have the work placement opportunities. So this would be a very great mm -hmm. uh, thing for the students who are really want to come into the market. So they could have a hand, hands-on experience, you know, into the related subjects. And that could really support them uh, while they are coming to the market. What do you think, Zena? Yeah, obviously, it's a very good thing. So I guess that uh, one of our students has raised a question regarding the placement option that uh, MS Inter uh, St. Mary is offering MS International Business Management with placement. They're asking about that mostly universities, you know, charge placement fee. So does St. Mary University charging any sort of fee regarding placement? No, we don't have yeah. a placement fee. Okay, yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, you know. Question. Very good question, yeah. but we don't have a placement yeah. fee. Okay, that's, that's great, so students. You just need to note mm -hmm. this thing that uh, St. Mary's don't charging anything for their work placement and their work placement is a part of their studies and uh, that would be a really a great opportunity that their courses are got the accreditations by the professional body. Uh, plus, they have the work opportunities, uh, work placement opportunities where they have linked with the industry mm -hmm. and you, can, you people can have a, a real-time exposure from the market and you can add up these things into your CV later on. Uh, again, I'll repeat my number. My number is given on the screen too, that if you people are always welcome to contact with the HR consultants and uh, contacting with Ms. Ms. Nadia, with me. My number is 0346-4747018 and you can always uh, send us on WhatsApp. You can always come up on WhatsApp and you can always send your documentation on WhatsApp and we are able to proceed for your application. Yes, and the okay. uh, these all for the courses, in terms of courses? Um, then the, just the last department, this is our largest department, but I'll just be quite brief at sports, health, and science. Uh, we have a number of courses at undergraduate and postgraduate uh, level. They're all listed here, but these are probably the highlights, particularly for the Pakistan market. So nutrition, sports and exercise science, conditioning science, uh, which have all the relevant accreditation. So the Association for Nutrition um, accredits our nutrition BSc, and then the British Association for Sports and exercise scientist um, is also um, uh, endorses our undergraduate programs in those areas and then at postgraduate level um, we have uh, subjects looking at human uh, how to develop human performance um, so biomechanics exercise physiology and then we have a human uh, nutrition program which is uh, again accredited and mm. students on successful completion of this nutrition program um, get direct entry to the UK voluntary register for nutritionists as a, an associate nutritionist so again great employment opportunities for that particular program and we have um, an MSc on nutrition and genetics and we were the first in the UK and Europe to deliver such a program which looks yeah. at the biology principles on interactions between human DNA and nutrition but there's a long list of programs uh, I would highly recommend if people are interested in looking at sports or health science to, to have, have a look at our website for, for our wide range of courses. And we okay, have a lot of inquiries regarding physiotherapy from our DBT students. Can you just highlight your DB, uh, Master of Physiotherapy program? Yes, um, it's a very, it's probably the most popular program for the university. So we have a two year pre-registration physiotherapy program. Um, I would like to stress that it is a highly competitive program. It's competitive in that it does have also a higher entry criteria. So we do ask for a two one equivalent. Um, 
and students do need to have work experience, relevant work experience. So even if they have the academic grades, if they don't have any relevant work experience, then uh, it's very unlikely that their application will be considered. And we only have a small number of um, uh, places available for international students. So I don't want to put students off completely, but I, I do want to stress that it is a very, very popular program. We have 30 places each year, about five of which are allocated to international students. So please do have a look. It includes, you know, a thousand contact hours. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a great program, but please do note that the entry criteria is higher and work experience is mandatory for this program. Okay, okay. Uh, so Anglip, uh, can, can we... Uh... Can we, uh, uh, can we share the screen uh, for the previous programs? Because uh, the uh, another program in the previous slide, I guess yeah. we have a question. Uh, which, which one? Uh, I, I guess that was before this. Yeah, here's, yeah, yes, yes. So for psychology of mental health, that program is also a conversion program? Um, it is, yes. So students don't okay. need to have um, a psychology background for this program. Okay, that's great. That's great. Because we are just getting a question for this program. So that's why I just asked you. Okay, excellent. So, uh, okay, Andeep, I have a question that uh, can you highlight it? What University of St. Mary has planned for Cambridge IGCSE students? As you know, that Cambridge has postponed, you know, the IGCSC papers. So what uh, arrangement do you have? That does uh, Saint Mary have made? You mean for A level students? Yeah, for A level students. So you know, uh, as you know, Cambridge has postponed their exams. Yes. So what you know, Saint Mary University ha has facilitated them. Yeah, that's a really good question, and um, the answer isn't definitive because um, there isn't. Uh, there's still looking at options, but it's very likely that uh, a student's predicted grades will be considered in place of their final A-level grades. Um, it might vary because some schools, for example, are um, giving additional information like coursework or final exam grades um, as part of the kind of the, the predicted grades. So it's the, the, the final decision has not been made, but it's very likely that St. Mary's will consider a student's predicted grades in place of their final A-level or IB grades. That's okay. good, that's good. So, uh, uh, Andali, what do you think that uh, from, from the students who are just uh, waiting for the A-level results, but they haven't placed the application on UCAS, can we take their direct applications via HR consultant suit? Yeah, absolutely. I would really recommend that students still apply. We are still accepting applications for September. We are still working towards opening by the end of September. Obviously, we, we don't know how things will unfold over the next few months and we will react accordingly. But for now, yes, we, we are we are open and uh, hoping that we do receive more um, stu applications from students. And I would definitely urge students to still apply even with their predicted grades. Um, if students haven't done A-levels, if they've done local exams, for example, we can still consider applications. We can consider it based on your transcripts. Um, if your university, for example, has uh, is not issuing uh, final certificates, but you have proof that they will give um, online uh, your grades online. So as long as we have confirmation from what your university is doing, whether they are can if they've cancelled or postponed exams, then we can still review applications accordingly. So I, I would urge you to still. Um, be, be open about making applications and the university is trying to be as flexible as possible because we understand it's a, it's a very uh, unusual and unprecedented situation that we're all in. Um, but offers still can be made based on your, your predicted grades and your transcripts, even if you don't have your final uh, year certificate. Okay, that's good. And you can you stop sharing your screen because so that people can look into you? Yeah, of but course. Answer the questions, yes, please. Yeah, that's good. Okay, Andalib, another thing is that uh, uh, the paper, uh, students you have to listen about the Andalib that she's saying that if you have not applied on the UCAS up till now, 
So it's it, don't, you don't need to worry. You can place mm -hmm. the application directly for the sent marriage through HR consultants, and HR consultants team is available to assist you for their undergraduate applications and for the postgraduate too. Specifically, mm -hmm. I'm just highlighting this point because normally students have a concern in their mind that now the UCAS deadlines has been passed out and we have already opted five choices. So you can always take St. Mary as an uh, additional choice mm -hmm. and uh, the people are happy to accept your application, uh, you know, directly uh, where, without UCAS because you have, if you have already opted five choices, you can always take, you can again take the St. Mary as a, as a, your uh, desired choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the same time, uh, you can contact HR consultants. Uh, you can contact our team and our admission team is here to support you to apply uh, directly for the St. Mary. The only thing is that you just need to uh, send your documentation to us uh, via WhatsApp and you can send the documents via email too. And you can even contact via phone and, you know, we can discuss your options and we can place your application to St. Mary for the undergraduate program now. Okay. Uh, yes, and uh, coming to the next question. Yes, Zainab, mm -hmm. please, if you have any question, yeah, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, Anjali, Anjali asked, you know, like COVID-19 pandemic is faced all around the globe. So in this situation, what leniency is given by the university regarding entry requirements? Sorry, what was the question? Is there more flexibility around entry requirements? requirements. As you know, that it's a pandemic situation around yeah. the globe. So is there any leniency offering by St. Mary, St. Mary University? Um, I mean, the university is uh, working towards being as flexible as possible because we do understand it's an unprecedented situation. So we're really looking at every application on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I guess, uh, uh, I guess uh, in terms of entry requirement, uh, yeah. if we have any application, uh, we are welcoming the students to place their application. And mm -hmm. I guess uh, the institute are here to support the students for the admission and uh, mm -hmm. same support I guess we could have from St. Mary too. Uh, the mm -hmm. first thing is that we need to send the application because normally the students are coming from the academics. So oh, we are very hopeful that the St. Mary is here for that. Yes. And we yeah. are here for the students to support them for the admissions too. So, prepare, uh, so students, you just need to place your applications. You don't need to worry. And HR team is here to support you, uh, you know, to get an admission from the institution. Mm -hmm. And even uh, if, if, if you apply for a course, which uh, might be you are not able to get into, so university can also suggest you the alternate course might be available mm -hmm. for you. And you can look into that program too. And you can even then apply for that program. Yes, Andalip? Is this the yeah, same? That, that, that's absolutely right, Nadia. And also, just, just to give some context in terms of our admission criteria, most of our courses at postgraduate level ask for a, two -two, a UK 2-2 two -two equivalent. So depending on which institution um, a student has studied at in Pakistan, that could, that could um, uh, be an equivalent of a GPA of 2.4, for example, or 2.6, 60 or 60. Five percent. Um, so there is, you know, there is some yeah. flexibility there. There's only a few courses that I mentioned, um, such as sports journalism, physiotherapy, that ask for a two-one equivalent. So slightly higher, a two-point-six GPA or two-point-eight, depending on the institution a student comes from. But we really do look at uh, both the institution. We look at the GPA, but also the percentage equivalent, because we're very much aware, you know, whereas the GPA might seem low, the percentage uh, in certain universities is a lot higher. And we're also aware that there are certain institutions in Pakistan that are renowned for being very strict in terms of marking. So we have flexibility also in terms of our entry criteria for those specific institutions. So like the University of Punjab, for example, we know um, generally mark on the lower end. So our, our admissions team is very sensitive to that. So please, yeah, it's always worth obviously okay. speaking with HR, obviously with me directly, if, if you have any concerns about ent entry criteria, but the university does adopt a very flexible approach. Anlib, I have a question that what are the basic requirements we should be careful of when, re when requesting for gas? What's the what, sorry? What are the basic requirements we should be careful of when, re when requesting for gas? Does, you know, uh, St. Mary University require any sort of bank statement while issuing gas or any sort of credibility interview? They, well, obviously, if a student comes through HR, 
then we know that they've already gone through a process regarding credibility. So it's very unlikely that an additional interview will be required. You know, you are our trusted yeah. agent in Pakistan. So we, we trust that the students that do come through you won't need then an additional um, uh, credibility interview. Obviously, IELTS is a big factor. So English language requirement, the university now is we're aware that IELTS test centers are closed in Pakistan, for example. So we are being a little bit more flexible in terms of alternative English language um, provisions. So IELTS indicator, for example, the university mm -hmm. is accepting. And we're also running our own in-country English language test, the Homes Language Assessment okay. Test, which all St. Mary's applicants um, can apply to take. It's much cheaper than IELTS indicator. It just takes over an hour but it works like um, IELTS and on mm -hmm. successful completion of that then automatically a student a student will meet our English language requirement. Okay what are the arrangements by the St. Mary, Mary University if a student is short to achieve 0 0.5 bands of IELTS like like uh, St. Mary's offering mm -hmm. pre-sessional programs? Yeah, we offer pre-sessional um, for either five or five. It, it depends on what, if it's an undergraduate degree, then our IELTS requirement is six. Mm -hmm. And if it's mm -hmm. a postgraduate degree for pretty okay. much most of our programs, we ask for 6.5. So we offer a six week okay. and a 10 week pre-sessional English language program. So students mm -hmm. can still opt to take the pre-sessional English. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we are exploring the option of perhaps delivering the first part of the pre-sessional program online because we don't know obviously how the situation is going to unfold. So we are still delivering our six and 10 week pre-sessional English language programs. It's still um, being decided whether the first part of that will be delivered online. But what's important to know is the CAS will be issued once the student can actually arrive in the country, not from the time that the pre-sessional English course okay. starts. Okay, that's good, that's good. And Dilip, uh, uh, thank you so much. You have given us a, a very detailed information, but the, uh, the most important thing, the message uh, we could have is that if the students are applying through HR consultants, so we are the official representative for the St. Mary University here in Pakistan. So that they have a very strong relationship with us. So you people can apply. Uh, the you can apply for the admission, and uh, even with the cast documentation, HR team would be assisting you uh, for the interview preparations, and uh, even with the financial checks. Uh, I guess we have a very strong relationship with the Saint Mary. So if the HR staff is looking after the financial documentation, and they are, we are checking, and our staff is okay that uh, the statements are fine. So I believe the Saint Mary would be accepting that thing. Yes, and the Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Then could we have any question from any other student? Okay. Uh, Andalip, uh, can we go with the, uh, you, you have to tell us about the courses and the entry requirement, but we need to know about the scholarships, you know, the Pakistan sure. students are more uh, in time towards scholarships. Yeah. Just me. I just want to share this slide with you. So, as I mentioned earlier, our tuition fees are quite competitive for London. So, undergraduate programs are all priced at the same um, fee, which is £12,250. Postgraduate programs are £13,650. That's the same across all subject areas. Now, the most important part, the international scholarships. As I said, we are still accepting applications for this September entry, and we are still awarding scholarships also for students applying for this September entry. At undergraduate level, we offer a scholarship of £3,000. This is merit-based and no additional application is required. So every applicant will be considered. We do look at obviously academically strong students, students that really show um, a keen interest in St. Mary's and the specific course that they're applying for. And then at postgraduate level, we have um, a 1500 which can rise up to 3000 pounds scholarship uh, for the first year so that would bring your tuition fees down to 
10,650 or around 12,000, depending on the scholarship. So they start at a minimum of 1,500 pounds, but at the moment we do have some scholarships available of up to 3,000 pounds for academically strong students. Again, you don't need to make an additional application, but we do obviously look at the overall profile of the student. Um, the yeah, cost of the, yeah, sorry. That's okay. So do you think that uh, there is a deadline with the scholarships? Um, at the moment, we, we have extended the deadline. We, we did have an end of May deadline for the scholarships, but because of the current situation, that is now being extended. So I would really urge students, though, that if there is a course and if you find the university right for you, then please do make an application over the next few weeks so that you will still be considered for a scholarship. I, I do appreciate these are uncertain times, but it is definitely still worth making that application to to, to at least still be considered for a scholarship. It does reduce the first year fees uh, quite considerably um, and they are still being allocated over the next month or two. Possibly more, we will potentially look at extending it. It just depends on how the situation unfolds. Okay, that's it. And I believe, uh, do you think that, uh, do we have a number of scholarships for these, uh, for, for the undergrad or postgrad or is it, it could be unlimited? It's, it is unlimited. A it's unlimited okay that's great that's great people this is a great opportunity for us that you can uh, come into the london institution you know and uh, you are you are getting the less fees and you have a, a great amount of scholarships available in undergrad and postgraduate board so you can always uh, welcome to apply via hr consultants and hr consultants team would be happy to assist you for to finding out these type of scholarships and specifically when they say that the postgraduate is 1500 to 3000 so we can always put our recommendation what do you think Andalee? absolutely we, I mean, we work closely with you to also get your recommendations yeah. so it's it's another benefit of working with hr okay good good that's 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 really an amazing thing that if we could uh, you know the we could we could uh, promote we can say we could pay any students for additional scholarships so yes and mary is you know just here to support us and uh, we people are always here to support the students to to get these type of scholarships because this is what uh hi is here and supporting the people to supporting our students specifically to get a number of, a lot a lot of numbers of scholarships for the from the uk institutions uh okay that's a great thing in terms of scholarships uh could you give us a little bit introduction about the accommodation that does your institution has the on-campus accommodation for the PG program for the PG yeah. students or for the UG one? Yes, so we're, we're, an, we're a campus-based university and we offer very affordable on-campus options um, which are guaranteed for undergraduate students in the first year and foundation mm -hmm. students. We have accommodation to suit different uh, price brackets. So depending on your budget, we have, for example, a twin room, a shared room with um, a catered option on campus, which starts as little as £5,200 for the year. That can increase up to seven to £8,000 for a private ensuite room on campus. Then um, for off-campus accommodation, Richmond, the borough that we're situated in, interestingly has a lot of affordable student accommodation. So a student, for example, can opt for a homestay, um, which can cost between three to 400 pounds per month, or shared private accommodation, which can range between four to 500 pounds per month. So it's quite affordable. And as I said, there are various options for on-campus accommodation to suit different budgets. And what's unique about St. Mary's is that there's also a catered option available, which is quite unique for particularly a London institution. So that includes your breakfast and your dinner. Obviously like a big part of going to university is learning how to cook. Um, but for students that, you know, would like their meals prepared for them, there are catered options available. It also works out quite economical to live on campus because all of your bills are included in that as well. So in terms of cost of living, um, students can really be 
frugal or extravagant. And I think, you know, uh, if you look on our website, we've got a great chart which looks at, you know, kind of maintenance and living costs. And a student can spend potentially as little as £650 per month all in with their living costs and accommodation or up to £1,600, depending on what option they go for. So I think the benefit of St Mary's is that there are different options in terms of accommodation to suit different budgets. Okay. okay. Yeah. One of the one of the student has raised a question regarding the location of the St. Mary University and yeah. how far is this from International Airport? Uh, it's 30 minutes from Heathrow Airport, which is the largest international airport in the UK. So it's situated in southwest London in Twickenham, and it's um, the location is a key selling point for the institution because it's it's got great access to central London, but it's also got great access to Heathrow Airport and then Greater London. Oh, okay, and then what are your suggestions regarding September 2020 intake due to the current pandemic situation? So will it be occur or not because our students are very much concerned about their September classes? Most of the universities have started uh, as an online classes, started giving online classes. So what do you see on it? I mean, the, the university has successfully transitioned to online for our current students. So we have those provisions in place should we need to start our courses or our programs in September online. However, um, for this current intake, we are very, very much geared towards still opening at the end of September. We're still processing applications as usual, uh, and we, we, we hope that, you know, there won't be a delay in terms of our start date, but we will, of course, take the necessary measures if changes occur. Um, we know that visa application centres outside of the UK are still closed, um, but we are um, still, and we're still able to issue students with CAS so that they can apply for their visa as soon as um, centres reopen. Um, I mean, it's important to tell students that the safety of all of our students is our foremost concern. Um, the university is following guidance from Public Health England on a daily basis to look at social distancing and what are, are all the other safety measures that we need to ensure are in place. Um, if we are to open at the end of September. Um, it's hard to know at the moment what, what, which way we're going to go. We don't have specific details, but you know, possible solutions could be, for example, that we might need to have smaller class sizes. We might need to introduce a blend of online and in-person delivery. What's good about the institution is that a lot of our courses do offer blended learning options. So we do have those provisions in place should we need to go down that route. Um, but I think at the moment, we, we can't give a confirmed response because we, we don't know how the next few months are going to unfold. But just to assure students that, yes, we are still processing, processing applications. We are still hoping to open by September, but we will take whatever necessary provisions we need to uh, should things change by, by September. Okay. That's good. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Sure, Miss, you may continue. Okay. Okay, okay. Zainab, I was just thinking that uh, we need to give this message to the student that uh, the people, the, the best thing I could find out in this uh, today's session is that students can still apply for the undergraduate studies and this is the uh, best time to apply now. And the best thing is that uh, they can, can apply without UCAS and they can always opt the HR platform uh, to place the application via for the undergraduate program. And I really uh, want that we can raise a number of applications for the undergraduate program because I have I could find that their program related to psychology and they have a very good program related to education specifically education psychology. for undergraduate. Uh, yes, and they have a very good profile in terms of these two academics. So I believe we need to raise the applications for these. And uh, I encourage you who are just who just want to apply for these programs. Um, you are more than welcome to come. Uh, and uh, you know for the assistance for uh, through, through HR consultants so we people are always available online we are always available on online site, mm -hmm. Skype sessions and even our teams are available on the WhatsApp too 
So you mm-hmm. people are welcome to place your application for the undergrad and for the postgrad. Uh, there's a lot of scholarship opportunities which Andreev has told us, and uh, we need to cater their scholarships too. And uh, mm-hmm. this is a good time that we can place applications and get an offer letter. Andreev, could you tell us uh, that you people are offering January session too, or either it's only September? Well, at the moment, the university um, has two master's programs that already have a January start date, and that's international business management and um, chronic disease management. However, there is a chance that we will have to open more courses for January. I can't give a definitive list yet, but there is a chance that there might be more courses offered in January as well. Okay, great. So uh, you can you people can also approach to Zena for the admissions and Zena number is here. My number is here. I repeat, my number is zero three four six four seven four seven zero one eight. And Zena, your number is zero three two one four seven four seven three one five. Yes, okay. great. Thank you. you um, our... Yes, please, and Zena, okay. if you have questions. Okay. Actually, one of our, one of the student has raised a question regarding credit transfer. He has sent. Uh, mm-hmm. He has done two semesters. From Pakistan okay. University, now he wants and uh, he's looking for credit transfer in St. Mary University in BA program. And yes, I believe. Could we, could we get the credit transfer? Could we raise that? Um, I would have to say that the university looks at credit transfers on a case by case basis. We okay. don't have a large number of transfer students, if I'm honest with you. So we would definitely have a look. But I can't okay. say that it's something that the university does a lot in terms of credit transfers. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess uh, we can we can place the application, and uh, you know, in terms of credit transfer, I always recommend the students that whenever you are sharing your documentation with us, please do share the course modules or course contents you have mm-hmm. studied so far, so that mm-hmm. you know it would be more easier that we can you know uh, share that content with the institution. You know, and uh, be, they will be more convenient for them that you know to assess the application then they could see that what programs you have studied so far and uh, mm-hmm. what next they can offer you. So I guess uh, we can, we can uh, place the application to St. Mary and for other institutions too. And uh, they people can consider that application depending on the course modules because it all depends yeah. on the like, like. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. And do so, you offer any, does St. Mary University offers any conversion programs? Yes, no. Conversion, what do you mean conversion? I think that if a student has uh, done BBA, he has a business background, and now he wants to study psychology and masters. So, do they do you offer any such programs? Um, yes, I, I would really recommend actually for a lot of our programs. If you look at the entry criteria, they um, they are quite broad in terms of accepting mm-hmm. students from different backgrounds. So, yes. Yeah. On our all of our web pages, if you scroll to the bottom under entry criteria, it will say specifically if a student does need to have a particular background. But there is generally quite a lot of flexibility for for some of our like science based um, social science based programs in terms of the student's background. So absolutely, uh, just double check courses. I have to if you're looking at a specific course, I'd have to double check. But we always stay in our entry criteria on the web page uh, if a student needs to come from a specific background or not. Then if any other question we are get, 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 getting from the students? No, I don't have right now. <laughs> okay, I have one question. I, I, I got one question from a student. Uh, and believe the, uh, the, do you think that uh, if a student is coming for the St. Mary accommodation, so they could have a preferred of only girls accommodation or only males accommodation do we have yes, something we do okay. we do we do have provisions for um uh same gender floors so okay. if a student just wants to be obviously with girls or just with boys then we have um accommodation available where the whole floor is it's the same sex basically so that the provisions are made for students that do request that absolutely that's good. And then the leap up, now how many times did that, do you think that the St. Mary is taking for generating the offer letter or to issue the offer letter or to assess, assess the applications? Well, obviously, if it comes through HR, we do it much quickly, much quicker. But uh, the, 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 goal, the goal is um, a couple of days. <laughs> a okay. couple of okay. days. Yes, hours. Yes. You can say that the two weeks process, two weeks time that St. Mary could ask for us. Hmm. 
Sorry. I I say that we can ask the student that they can they can have an uh, the CM within two weeks. Yeah, I mean definitely within two weeks. But obviously, oh. you know, if 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 expediency is something that we need, then obviously we work with you to try and get a quicker turnaround. If a student submits all of their documents and it's very clear, clear documents are important. Uh, unfortunately, we do tend to get a lot of applications where students have just taken quite poor quality photos of their mm. certificates. And then we write back asking for, you know, clearer documents. And that often then slows down the whole process. So if a student wants to get a response quickly, I would really urge them to submit all of the, the, the required documents if they are available, obviously, but make sure that they're clear as well. If they're taking photos, make sure that they're very clear or they scan them in so that we don't have an issue uh, in terms of kind of reading them and then going back to them and asking, you know, personal statements, please also submit your SOPs when you make your application. That is a requirement as well. So if students can get in all of the documents clearly, then then they can get a quicker turnaround for sure. But yeah, two weeks is is obviously the maximum window. Okay, great. Oh. That's good. That's good. Um, uh, Zainab, any question from your side? I believe uh, uh, and believe has covered all the things from our side. Yeah, and then Leave has covered all the things, and has, she has, you know, described you know, she programs, accommodation, uh, scholarships, etc. And everything she has described and also answers the inquiry, the inquiries from our students. So yes, it was really, really, really wonderful message. session. Yeah, I guess. And the, and the most important uh, thing is uh, for this session is that uh, I recommend all the students that you should paste your applications for all the UK institutions, specifically for the St. Mary's. And uh, we people are here to support you. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, I think that the, uh, due to the COVID-19, the student might be thinking that we should place application when the it will be over. So it would be late, I believe. You need to place your application now. HR consultants are official representative of these institutions, and we people are not charging you anything for application process. So you feel yeah. free to uh, coordinate with our uh, counselors. You know, and uh, you can you can always come to me um, mm -hmm. with my number. It's zero three four six four seven four seven zero one eight, and uh, I'm here to support you for the admissions. And if you mm -hmm. have any inquiries specifically for the Saint Mary. You can always put that inquiry to Andalib too, and our team will be here to assist you for admissions. We yeah. recommend you to place your application now so that uh, you people be able mm -hmm. to get uh, admissions on time. And once the COVID-19 will be over, so we can quickly go for the visa applications. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Andalib, do you have any message? Yeah, I just wanted to share this with um, students, this website here, I hope you can all see it. We're running um, a number of postgraduate webinars this month uh, for pretty much most of our master's programs, not all, um, but more are being updated on a daily basis. So I would really urge students, if you are interested or if you've seen any courses that I've mentioned uh, that you'd like to find out more about, have a look at this a web, web page. It's Open Events Webinars on the St. Mary's webpage. And it gives a list of all of the webinars that we're hosting this month for all of our postgraduate programs. And that's a great way to hear directly from an academic um, more details about the specific programs and it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to obviously ask specific questions about the programs in more detail um, but it's um, it's definitely something I would recommend students taking a look at particularly if there's been a program that we mentioned today that they're interested in finding more about more information about. Okay, okay, thank you good. so much, Anneep, and thank you so much, Ms. Nadia, for joining us, and thank you, Anneep, for, you know, discussing about the university programs, accommodation, and you have also guided us about the scholarship, and to all our viewers who have watched uh, the live session, if you have any questions regarding, you know, application process and regarding other universities, you can contact me on 321 474 Thank you, everyone, yeah. and I'll office. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Take nice care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.